Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this quick inspiration video, I am sharing six different five minute project ideas. These are fun, they're beautiful, easy to make, and best of all, they're quick little projects. Let's get started. Idea number one is a decorated tag slash mini booklet. As you can see, there's a pocket on the inside, pocket here at the front, lots of fun stuff that we have up here. These are really good junk journal companions. It can be a card. You can write some notes in there for a loved one. You can stick some photos in there, all sorts of stuff. All right, let's make it. I'm starting off with this leftover piece of scrapbook paper. It kind of has a slight cardstock quality. You can use any size paper that you have. You just need to fold it in half. It really doesn't matter where you fold it. I think I'm gonna follow what I've done before approximately make the fold and now that i'm here i'm going to add an extra element and instead of cutting this off i am going to have a little flip page right here at the back of my decorated tag so i'm going to fold that in but to what i've done with the previous two is i cut that piece off so next thing you want to do is make it a tag shape just eyeballing it here and now i'm going to use this piece that i cut off from here flip it around and use that as my template over here just so I get a symmetrical looking tag. Might cut this perforated edge here and let's have a look. Okay, this is what we have so far. I left this shorter, I mean the paper was shorter, so this kind of back tag bit doesn't look symmetrical. So I don't know if I wanna leave it or if I wanna take it out. I'm gonna leave it for now. We're keeping it simple. Next thing I'm going to do is punch a hole here just at the front of uh, the very first page just there there we go ink all the edges okay that's done and now dive into your stash and grab some leftover pieces to make a front pocket cut that to size we're working on the front pocket now so you can have a play around with what you want to do here but i really want to do like a little wiggly thing which is what i've been doing with the other two that I made so I'm just kind of doing something like that and I want it a little bit shorter down here maybe all right that's looking good and now I'm going to apply glue on these three sides and glue that down excellent so you can see where we're going with this we've got the pockets and now what I've done in these Two that I've made before is these offcut pieces. I've used them as the pocket on the inside. You can see that, but I kind of cut this one off way too short, way too thin, but it can still serve as a little tuck spot. So I'm just gonna glue it in there. Perfect. Next thing you want to do, I mean, you don't have to make it a booklet, but if you want to, this is what you would do next. Grab some paper. I am only using two sheets of paper. So that gives me eight sides, eight blank spaces to write on. Pop that in there and trim all of the excess off. Now that that's done, we're going to bind this into the booklet. You could just staple it in there or you can do a three hole pamphlet stitch, which is what I'm doing in the middle hole. It's all right, boy. We go to the top hole back inside the lowest hole we're going back outside and back in through the middle tie a double knot trim that off and done ink the edges again if you wish to kind of blend it all in a little bit more fill up the pockets grab a little safety pin or a bulb pin and perhaps some beads a little charm a little something some pretty trim a little piece of lace pop it all onto the bob pin and then onto the tag give it a bit of a cut 
and done how easy was that i love the combination of black and gold that i did on here i love the little gold charms everything kind of pops up a little bit when there's a bit of gold happening bit of bling and then of course from here you can go to town with how you want to you know embellish and what you want to add or not you know you may leave it as plain as you want you don't even have to do the little booklet on the inside you can just do a tag that opens up or just a tag it doesn't even have to open up all right let's move on to idea number two which is paper rosettes due to the bulk of the paper rosettes obviously you can't stick this into a journal this is a beautiful little thing that you can put on top of gifts you can also package them up and sell them at markets which is where i got this idea from a lady was selling them you can also make hair accessories i mean i'm not sure how, how much i love that idea but you can put them on large paper clips like this and then they can be like a page divider inside your journal so i just love the look of them look how beautiful they are i've never made them before and they're so easy to make let me show you how all right first thing you want to do is dive into your scraps of scrapbook paper or pretty paper pattern paper or you can just do white paper and you want to find something that's sort of widish depending on the size of the rosettes as you can see you can make larger ones you can make smaller ones so once you see how they're made it's all going to make sense to you but i'm going to use this piece of paper and i'm going to use this piece of paper because it's on my desk and this one's a little bit narrower so what's going to happen here is we're going to be splitting this in half so just keep that in mind in order to get the full circle we need like two very long pieces but before we do any of that we need to make the folds okay and you don't need to have one of these tools you just need to crease the paper now at half an inch that's what i'm doing just half an inch all the way to the end okay you can see those beautiful creases and now instead of just finding the middle and cutting that in half i'm going to fold it in half and the reason why I'm doing is it this way is because you really need to have two sides that are exactly the same. I'll turn it around this way because you can see better. And now that that's folded, I'm going to cut that. I'm just cutting the spine off, let's say, a tiny little sliver of paper here so that I have two pieces. And this is the important part. You need to have two pieces that are exactly the same height. So you can theoretically, let's say you have two pieces in your stash, let's say like this, uh, and you can, you know, use two of these strips. You just have to make sure that they're exactly the same height. It will make sense. As we go along, these are probably details that you don't care about right now. So now that you have your two pieces, you start folding. So we're going peak and valley kind of thing. One up, one down, and then do all of that until you reach the end. I'm actually going to have this as the front of my flower. So you can see here right now, I only folded a one strip down. And of course, we can't make a rosette out of this one piece because it's not long enough. You see that? It only gives me half a rosette. That's why we need to have two pieces. The longer your pieces, of course, the more of these peaks and valleys you're going to have, the more kind of dense it's going to be. So just here, you can see a difference. These little peaks and valleys here are denser than these ones here. Okay. Now what's going to happen is I want this to be the front of my flower and you can see a uh, rosette, I mean, and you can see how I ended up on the up. That piece is going up. That means now I'm going to start folding this one with my piece going down and just keep repeating, do the exact same thing. And here's what we have. It's kind of looking wonky. It's not perfect, perfectly straight or anything like that. None of that matters. All right, so the reason why you want to end one on going up and start the next one on going down because we are going to be joining it like this. It's as simple as that. The next thing you do, of course, is join them together. You can use double-sided tape or apply a little bit of glue, which is what I'm doing here, and join them together. Now, if your pieces are different heights, even if it's only one millimeter off, and even with all the precautions that I've taken, you can see these two pieces, there's slight difference in height. You can see that tiny little bit of difference here, okay? We want to avoid it as much as possible. Obviously, a tiny little discrepancy is better than a huge discrepancy. 
and you will see why it's important in a moment. We're doing, again, joining the other side of the rosette together. Perfect, quite simple. And now this is what you have. If you're gonna make a whole heap like I did over here, uh, it's probably a good idea to have like a little production going. So you do this with all of your pieces before you move on to the next part, which is you grab your piece and if you just kind of pull it together here and smush it down, that's what's gonna happen. Unfortunately, I have really bad lighting today because of the weather, but I'm sure that you can see the little rosette. Now, when I was talking about the levels, if you have one piece that's even a millimeter larger, when you do this, you will have little ridges. These little ridges are not going to be completely flat. You, some of them are gonna be raised higher, and that creates a tiny little bit of a problem when you start attaching your little centers, which is what we're going to do next. It's not a big problem, but you might find that the centers are not sitting level. And if you're a perfectionist, that's gonna bug you like crazy. Okay, next thing you wanna do is grab your hot glue gun. And while that's heating up, you wanna choose your centers. So anything can be a center. I have these pre kind of punched out little pieces here. Oh, that's a good one. And because I want this to be the right way up, I think it's gonna go really nice, even though it's a little bit difficult to see, but I think that's gonna look, that's gonna be a nice rosette. Actually, you need two, one on the bottom, one on the top, and I'm going to start on the bottom. Hold that in place. It's gonna keep wanting to open on you, so just try and hold it in place. And I'm applying hot glue there in the center, and then my back piece goes right on top of the hot glue. And th this is why I do the back first, because sometimes it moves and all sorts of things happen and it, things can go wrong. So if something's gonna go wrong, it's better for it to go wrong here at the back. All right, hold that in place. Once that's done, you turn it around. And now I wanna get my hot glue and I like to like fill that up. Uh, that rosette is not gonna be going anywhere because I filled that up with hot glue and now applying hot glue a little bit around, pop my little center and just hold it in place until it cools down, which luckily with the hot glue gun happens very quickly. And now to finish it off, I've been using, this is a lucky find, these are all earrings. You can glue any kind of top piece on top of that. Okay, so now I can either just pop that through here, there we go, call it done, or I do like to add a little bit of hot glue and I'm not a fan of these things being kind of in there because I always imagine what if someone steps on it, like, you know, and then, I don't know. So oftentimes I will remove this post, but you know what, I'm just gonna keep it on there for now so that we can move along. Added a tiny little bit of hot glue there and I'm gonna glue my center piece. And now to finish off, I'm going to do some inking, which really on this paper rosette, it doesn't really make any difference, but I like these edges to not have any white. But if your rosette is light like this, then when you go in with the inking, it creates those, you see that? I just love the look of that. It gives it more dimension, even though it's very dimensional, really doesn't need any more dimension than it already has. Okay, and there we go. I'll show you my rosettes real quick, the ones that I've made. I have to say that I have seen these before, obviously, but I was never really a big fan of them, to be honest, because, I don't know, they just never really spoke to me. But when I started making them, let me tell you, this here is a shank button, and I just snapped the shank part off, and here we go. So when I started making them, I just absolutely loved how they look. See that? I just love how they look. They look so beautiful and rich. I'm not sure. I think I really didn't like the idea of them because I wasn't sure how to use them. But let's grab that off-cut piece from the previous project. I really love the idea of using them as paper clips and gluing them onto paper clips. And of course, presents. Okay, this is a bow from my previous one of my videos that I've done in the past for bow making, I'll link it, link that video, but you can see how beautiful that looks. Probably too big, that one. Let's see what's gonna go better. Oh, I like how this one looks. That looks really nice. Perhaps with a ribbon like this, it would look better. Or maybe something a little smaller will look nice. 
I don't know, for a present, it looks like I prefer the bow, if I'm being honest. But anyway, for this type of thing, I think I'm going to be using it as paper clips. Oh, love that look. Love, love, love. And I don't know if I finished saying what I was saying before. When you make it as a little, let's say, production line, you get all of your papers out. You trim them down, you start folding them, you get them into a circle, you get like seven, eight circles happening. Then you heat up your hot gun and you do it step by step a whole lot at once. You can make a whole lot at once. All right, moving on to project number three. I mean, this is as simple as it gets. We are making a triple pocket page, or in this case, there's four, or there's three, or there's two using scraps which is always a great idea and basically what these are they are pages that are ready to be bound into a journal this kind of thing is really good to be glued onto pages that don't have writing so this is something that you can't write on unless you put something on top right so pockets adding pockets and stuff like that is a really good idea on pages like this this is a dictionary page on book pages and stuff like that and then you can, I mean, it doesn't have to be bound into a journal. This is a journaling spot. And anyway, there's many variations to this idea. And the idea is very, very basic. So I'm just going to grab this piece that I had sitting there from before. I'm making three pockets. So this, I think, is 12 by 12. So that's 12 inches. I'm going to divide the 12, 12 inches into three, which is four. So I'm going to mark at four inches and then I'm going to trim and here we go you can use any piece of paper from your scraps you just want three pieces they don't even have to be all exactly the same now we're going to create an opening I'm using a circle punch if you don't have a circle punch you can just cut it by hand or you can do like a triangle opening as long as you have something to indicate that this is a pocket excellent you see that I mean does it get any simpler than that in all of the edges, I feel like this is what makes them really pop off of the page. Next, grab your piece of paper, whatever you want to glue them down on. And I have some dictionary pages ready. I want to show you this. After I did these yesterday, I had all of these half circles on my desk from cutting those openings, right? And instead of throwing them in the bin, which I will do, I'm not completely crazy, I just use little off cuts there and then sewn that on as a tab. So that's a, an extra little thing that I thought I'll share with you. I mean, I know that it's bordering on insanity, but you know, if it makes you happy, then who, who really cares? Okay, so now at this point, you can layer your pockets any way you want. Like, look at that. Oh! Look, look how simple and easy. I mean, I'm sure you've done this before. You can also have them, I kind of like to move them around a bit and have them non-symmetrical, perhaps something like this. So you can see pretty much all of the pockets that I did are not in a straight line, but I like to have at different levels. You can do stuff like this. You can mix and match. It doesn't have to be three of the exact same. You can see here I've used all the same paper and then you can go and mix and match and add extra little things this one here when I punched the circles I didn't punch them all in the middle as you can see this one here is in the middle this one is all the way here to the right and this one is all the way here to the left so that's another variable there's so many different things that you can do with this idea here I have a deep pocket and then I have a sort of a more shallow pocket and then here we have four different pockets, four different scrapbook papers, and then here three different scrapbook papers. The only thing that I do kind of like to do is have the opening completely overlap the previous pocket. And I also don't like this kind of look when the opening is anywhere outside of the previous pocket. So once you kind of know where you want to go, you want to start gluing the top pocket first and just applying glue to the side side and bottom and then you go with the next pocket down because it's overlapping the previous one so again so you can have as many of these as you can fit on a page and here we go i'm going to let that dry but you can see it's important to start from the top pocket because all of the others are glued over the top and then you have you know 
it would have been nice if I had something in the pockets to show you how it's going to look, but I'm pretty sure that's pretty self-explanatory and you get the gist. And I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this yet, all this hairy trim. It's not bad, but there's a way that I did this that I was going to show you now, but I'm not going to show you now. We'll do it in another video. I say let's move on to idea number four, which is these quick mini junk journals using two envelopes. So for this project, you will need two envelopes. I've already tea dyed these envelopes. They don't have to be tea dyed. You're going to pop them side by side like this. Maybe use a tiny little bit of sticky tape here in the middle to hold them in place. Next thing you need is a little bit of washi tape. Pop that down right there in the middle. We're joining the two envelopes together. Turn it around. Now working on the outside, you need a little bit of fabric. We're going to rip that fabric, apply a little bit of glue and use a brush to kind of evenly brush that glue on and then apply the fabric. And now I'm going to trim the top and bottom and fray those edges. Beautiful. Next thing you want to do is the inside signature. These are just some coffee dyed pages and I want them to fit perfectly inside. So I'm just going to mark where I need to trim and I want deckled edges. So I'm using my tear ruler. If you don't have a tear ruler, you can make a DIY version, which is what I've got here. And I just ran this plastic ruler across my metal fence. You can use a file, you can use whatever you have. I'll keep these pieces for now because I will need them. I'm going to fold this in half, pop it inside my little book. And again, I'm going to mark where I need to trim the pages down to. And again, rip that off. Ink those edges, pop my signature inside the envelopes nice and snug, make three holes. And now because I want to have a bow on the outside, I'm going to start binding my journal from the outside in. I'm just using a piece of twine here. Starting in the middle hole, going from outside in, go down to the bottom hole, back in through the top hole and back outside through the middle hole. Excellent. Make that nice and tight, tie a knot and a bow that's bound. And now for my front piece, I have this piece of book page that I have left over from a previous project and I am just going to tear it there somewhere ink the edges okay and now this is when these pieces come in because i want to create this kind of a look you can see top and bottom so all i'm going to do is grab some of these pieces turn my piece around pop a bit of glue up the top and glue it down rip the excess off there's one ink the edges and then repeat a little bit of glue and pop it down onto the next piece rip the excess off ink there's my top and now repeat exactly the same process on the bottom edge and here's what i have nice and grungy and now all that's left to do is to glue this on top so here comes the glue and right on top it goes this one kind of looks empty compared to these two so all i'm gonna do i have this leftover fabric i'm gonna do something with this use a bit of an off cut that i had from before what else do I have? Maybe go in with a little butterfly, hold it all together with a brad and glue it all down. How cool does that look? Love it. And then all we have to do is pop some fun stuff into that envelope. That's done. And now the back, more fun stuff. And there's our little journal. You can have as many pages in there as you want. I love how this one turned out. Of course, it's my favorite now. That always happens. And I have three little mini double envelope journals. I really love how that looks. All right, let's move on to idea number five, which are these beautiful lace tassels, which you can use to hang on spines of journals, which is what I'm going to use them for. Or they could be pretty cool as little Christmas tree ornaments and all sorts of other fun stuff. All right, let's make some. I'm using five pieces of lace that I've previously cut down and now I'm just going to stack them on top of one another in a somewhat crisscross fashion like so. 
then you will need some type of a ring. I'm going to turn this outside like this. Pop my ring through. I want this join of the ring. I don't know if you can see the light is so horrendous today. I want it to be on the inside of the tassel. So I'm just going to double check how this is going to look. Bring it somewhere to the middle, something like that. I'm using my hot glue gun for this. You don't really need a hot glue gun. You can just tie a piece of string here to hold it together, which is what I usually do. But this time around, I'm going to use my hot glue gun. I'm going to apply a little bit of this hot glue onto the ring there and a little bit on the lace and then close it. And just kind of hold it in place until it somewhat dries in there. Well, it dries very quickly, as you know. Next thing I've got here is a little bit of this decorative trim. Again, you can just use a piece of string. Now, again, I'm going to go in with my hot glue gun, apply a little bit here, pop that down. And now I've been leaving this kind of wide rather than scrunching it all up together. I like to leave it a little bit wide here up the top, if that makes sense. And again, on the back, pop a little bit more hot glue and then close that in place and then trim this excess off. All right, that's done. Next thing I want to do is add a little dangly. So I've chosen this leaf. This came from a broken necklace. I'm just opening that up and I'm going to loop it through. It doesn't matter where I just happen to have this trim that has these loops. So it's a perfect place for me to loop that through. Close it. Perfect. That's looking really nice so far. And now to finish it off, maybe a little bow and a little center. And again, this is an, an earring. So I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do this, but I want this earring in there. Just pop that through the bow. I wonder if I can push it all the way through. Of course, you can use hot glue gun to glue that on, but I pushed, since I'm using an earring, I pushed it all the way through and now it's got the sharp bit at the end, I mean at the back. So I'm just going to, all right, that worked, perfect. And there we have it, look how gorgeous that looks. And then you can go and give it a haircut if it needs a bit of a trim. And I just want to show you the previous ones I've made, just a little bit more up close. So exactly the same way as you can see, you can use different colored laces. This is from, you know, those wine glasses, you know, those things for parties where you can mark your glass. Anyway, that's what I used here. And then this is again an earring. Here's one with a smaller ring up the top and just the bow here instead of an earring and a little dangly bit there. And the prettier your laces, the better the whole thing looks. And again, same as this one here, just a little bow, some laces. And here's the lucky last again, that's an earring and just little birds there on that charm. And they look absolutely beautiful. I really love this project, really easy to make. This is the largest one that I've made and that's my favorite one. All right, let's move on to the next idea, which is idea number six. And these are mini matchbooks. And this is a perfect project because it's easy, it's quick, and we're using up scraps of paper and you can use it as a junk journaling companion. Look at this, how beautiful. You can use it as little grocery lists. You know, pop it in your bag. It's just a fun little thing where we are just using up scraps, which most of us have plenty of. Okay, all you need is, of course, your scraps. And I want a long piece. This is a good one. I really loved using vellum. If you have vellum leftover pieces, I know that's not something that everyone has. And I tend to hoard my vellum pieces. Uh, here, here's one. I wonder if I should. Anyway, this is not 12 by 12. It's a bit shorter. Doesn't really matter. All right, here's what I use. So this is either one of those projects that you've done before. Or you're going to think, why didn't I think of this extremely simple and easy little idea? Okay, here's my piece. I'm going to fold it there somewhere. Doesn't really matter where you fold it, as long as this top piece goes over the top, just like so. Ink those edges. Go ahead and grab your scraps of paper. This is a very small selection of my scraps of paper and just start trimming it to size so that it fits right inside the booklet. I like to ink the edges, of course. You can use like packaging, paper, 
paper that has stuff on the back patterned paper just make it kind of fun and make it you know different levels maybe a little something like this maybe even this i mean this is from a bouquet of flowers perhaps there's not much point to adding this but i like it so i'm going to for a bit of a different texture in there all right once you're satisfied you can go you can have a lot more papers in there you very simply staple in the middle somewhere to hold it all, all in place. And then I like to hide the staple. How does this go? Perfect. Glue a little something right on top of that staple there. Perhaps you can add a little closure or not. You know, you can decorate, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. We're keeping it nice and simple and quick. But another thing I also like to do is just to add a little detail, maybe a little stamp. I found this cool stamp at a D stash, craft D stash market. My name is clearly not Judith, but have a look. Oh, how cool is that? A little button. Have a look if there's any craft D stash markets near you. You can pick up all sorts of fun stuff. This was a dollar. Anyway, I like to just do a little detail and I'll show you the inside of the other ones. How easy is this? Look at this this is a rub-on little transfer and i have you know some pieces of paper in there really beautiful little thing to tuck into pockets and journals and to journal in and this is also a rub-on little transfer i don't know i just love things like this in journals i think we all do i made this ages ago and there we go again a rub-on and you know we even i don't know do you do you keep things like this when when you punch out the hearts I don't usually tend to keep these, but I did in this case and it looks beautiful in there. So, how easy was that? I love projects that use up scraps of paper and that also look really nice and fun. Okay, so to recap, we have idea number one, which is this fun decorated tag mini booklet. Idea number two are the paper rosettes. Idea number three is the triple pocket page or the double or the quadruple. Idea number four is the quick mini junk journal using two envelopes. Idea number five is the lace tassels. And idea number six is the mini matchbook. And there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please let me know which one of these projects is your favorite one. I love them all personally. And what I love most about them is that they're quick and easy to do. And I did all of this in the last couple of days. If you enjoyed this video, you are going to love this video, Seven Simple Junk Journal Ideas, Quick Embellishments. Have a look at that next. Let me know, of course, what you think. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.